Hi there, I am Aftab Sayed from the IT Videos YouTube channel and in this video I am going to talk about how we can create Azure Functions, how we can deploy Azure Functions. If you are wanting to learn how to create Azure Functions, please make sure you watch this video from start to finish and this is going to really help you get a good grasp of what Azure Functions are and how to explore various deployment options as well. And just very quickly, if you are new to this channel, please make sure you subscribe right now because I'm on a mission to help as many people as I possibly can. And I can only do that if you are subscribed to this channel. And please make sure to give this video a like because that tells me you're finding this content helpful and that motivates me to create more content for you. So with that thing out of the way, let's get straight into the video. All right, before I show you an example of how Azure Functions are created in Azure Portal, let's talk about what Azure Functions are so that we can get the definitions out of the way. So Azure Functions basically is a serverless solution that allows you to write less code and requires less maintenance of the infrastructure and also saves on cost because it is running on compute model. That means you pay as you use it as they are run. The other benefit of using Azure function is they are quite fast to execute because there's no large application or start time or initialization and other even fired because the code is executed because they are, they are really lightweight and they are industry standards and they can communicate with other APIs, databases and library and it requires less maintenance. Instead of worrying about deploying and maintaining servers, the cloud infrastructure provides all the up-to-date resources needed to keep your application running. You focus on one piece of code that matter most to you and Azure function handles the rest for you. Now I hope you have got some rough idea about what Azure functions are and how you can benefit from them. Mind you, Azure functions are not a total replacement for the web API. Let's get straight to the Azure portal and see how we can go about creating an Azure function. All right, I'm here in my Azure portal. I'm going to click on the create a resource button. And what are we creating? I'm going to look for function app. I'm going to click on that link and it opens up the function app blade. In Azure, we call it blade, not a window. So this, all these are, I mean, this is a blade. So I'm using my free trial subscription. I'm just going to create a new resource. I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to prefix it by resource group dash function app. So I know that this is a resource group for the function app. Let's keep that. And next we have the function app name. I'm going to give it a name, function app. Let's call it EIT videos. Let's call it fun app or funk app. All right, looks like that name is available. It has to be unique. And then what we are saying is we either can choose Docker or code. If you're deploying it or publishing it via the doc Docker container, you can choose that option uh, or you can choose the code. But in my case, I only have the code option available. So I'm going to choose that that is dependent on the subscription that you use. All right, next we have the runtime stack. What are you going to select? Are you going to use Python or Node.js? I'm just going to stick with .NET. And then it has automatically picked the most uh, uh, stable version, which is .NET 6. And then the region, I'm going to choose the one that's closer to me, where I'm located, that is Australia Southeast. And then you can either choose Linux or Windows. I'm gonna use Windows because I'm, you know, uh, more comfortable uh, using Windows, but it can run either or Linux or Windows. Uh, in the plan type, uh, consumption model or the serverless is the way to go. So I'm gonna leave that as, as the default. So I'm gonna click on review plus create. It's going to do some validation and looks like uh, the validation is looking all good. And this is giving me a summary of uh, the things that are needed uh, for the deployment uh, or to create this function app rather. So this looks okay to me. I'm going to hit on the create button. This looks like it's uh, 
just going ahead and doing the deployment for me at this stage it's going to take a couple of minutes to go ahead and do the deployment what we're doing now is just creating a function app and it's giving me a status of uh, what is being deployed or created the status is okay uh, looks like the deployment is still in progress um, so once we're done with creating the function app looks like we're almost done i'm going to click on go to resource that will take me straight to the resource uh, page or resource blade so what we have here is we have created the function app so if i click on the url if i click on the browse uh, it's telling me that uh, the azure function app is is up and running so this is all good to go uh, so let's create some function inside of this function app so in my left hand pane in the functions section i'm going to click on functions and as you can see i don't have any functions at this stage because i haven't created any function inside of the function app so i can click on the create button and when i click on the create button it gives me uh, few options a uh, number of options that i can use to create the type of function i can choose a timer trigger which will run on schedule basis i can specify the schedule or as to when it will run uh, you know all the other types of uh, functions that you can use um, for the most part uh, you probably be using the http trigger because you can just invoke it and you know use it uh, so I'm going to click on HTTP trigger uh, function and I can provide a name I can just say my HTTP trigger and the function is I'm going to call it I'm going to leave it as function I'm going to leave it as default and uh, with these two properties set I'm going to hit on the create button and it's going to go ahead and create that uh, function for me and now I'm inside of that my HTTP trigger function blade so what do we have here we have got few options on the left hand side so the first one under the developer is the code place test so if we click on that it will open up the window or the blade for us that has all the code written for us but this is like the starter or the boilerplate code I'm just gonna say minimize the logs so what it's doing is it's ac accepting the name as a query it's assigning that value in this name variable and it's just going to output that uh, back to the user it's going to say hello it's going to say hello that name that is passed why the query it's just going to spit that out with this so if you want to test this one out i can click on test slash run and so in in the name so the name is what you specify so i can just say hello i can just say mike for example and i can say run it's going to go ahead and run and come back with a hello mike this http trigger function executed successfully so this response is actually coming from this line number 20 so this was 200 okay that was the output and the input that was given was this one so if i want to test this function app via my let's test this function app via the uh, postman so i'm going to click on get function url i'm just going to copy this whole url in my clipboard and i'm going to open the postman and see if we can call this function that we just created via the postman and see how that works let's wait for the function uh, for the postman to load all right i'm going to click on the new tab all right and i'm going to put that url that i just copied from the function app and as you can see this has some code which is the authentication code remember this is not the anonymous function that we created 
we created a function that has the, uh, the the code or the authentication key for example if you don't have this code you won't be able to call this function properly so what were we having we were having uh, let's let's first try try putting that uh, putting the that body right we had that body in, as name equals as Mike this is the JSON so I'm gonna copy that go back to my postman and in the body I'm gonna say raw and just check that in there I'm just gonna say hello Smith or say Smith postman for example right so we have that we have this in the body and looks like that's the minimal information that we have I'm gonna hit the send button and let's see what we get back so we get 200 okay and it's saying hello Smith postman so this is what we're getting back uh, this is one way of passing the value the other way you can try out is by sending the parameters so for example you can put name as the as the key and the value could be whatever you want so I'm gonna say key is the name and uh, value could be Dan value for example right I'm gonna remove the value from the uh, from the body and now we have some uh, parameters that we are passing right and if I I click in the URL if I look at the URL you can see that it has concatenated that value that we have typed in the parameter so with that value in place let me hit the send button and let's see what we get so now it is successfully reading the value that we are passing as a query string that we are passing right and it is outputting the response back to me as expected so that's how we can call Azure functions and this is an HTTP trigger. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please let me know in your comments down below.